Hello everybody and welcome to Vivid Collectibles. My name is Danny and today I'm going to be bringing you my thoughts and review of the brand new Hulk premium format figure by Sideshow Collectibles. Uh, thank you Chris for the opportunity. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you today about what I like about this statue and the things that I may not like before we get into that. This was sculpted by Daniel Bell, designed by Richard Luong and painted by Casey Love. They've collaborated on a lot of really great pieces already. So when this was announced, for me, I knew I was going to get it, but the initial pictures were a little bit divisive. It was kind of an awkward angle. It seemed a little chunky. Just we didn't know what to expect. And then it surprised us with four versions of Hulk. You have the classic green, which is this one. Then you have the red one, which is a retail exclusive only, meaning you have to buy it through an authorized sideshow retailer whether it's a comic book store or an online store, you can't get it directly from Sideshow, which is the bummer because that was nice too. They have a different green variant and also a gray one. The green and gray one, the other ones, have torn shirts, which is a pretty nice feature. Those are not out for pre-order yet. Edition size on this one is 750 and is currently waitlisted at Sideshow. That means that the allotment is sold out, but people do cancel, change their minds, so if you jump on the wait list, there is a chance that it will convert and you may be able to get this at some point. And in my opinion, uh, if you like Hulk, you might want to jump on that wait list because most of what I'm going to tell you is going to be overwhelmingly pos uh, positive about this statue. Daniel Bell is very, very famous for his anatomy work, right? He's, that's his forte. And with the Hulk, that's a must. He's all muscle and basically all anatomy. So it's a bit of a challenge to get him right because he's been interpreted differently by different comic books over the years. But this is very much a classic Hulk. And to answer a quick question out of the way real quick, it is scaled properly. He's massive. In fact, right now, he's next to the Gladiator Hulk, which is also sculpted by Daniel Bell. And they're, they're very comparable. Obviously... This premium format is a classic and he's wide open lunging, so he looks really, really big and puffy. But that's part of the attraction to this statue. So without much further ado, I'm going to get into the review and tell you my uh, pros and cons of this awesome premium format statue. Okay, right away here, we're going to start with the base. And basically what you have is your standard rubble. He's broken this from jumping on and off of it. And uh, it's, it's nicely painted. It does have some texturing. Uh, it is kind of on the smooth side, but it's painted very well. And you can see some nice definition on, on, this, on the rubble. You have all of these metal beams. I love the paint job on the metal beams. You see the rust part on them, right? And you can see the rust spilling onto the rocks. You have what looks to be a drainage sewage pipe. And it looks like there's some sewage in there. You have uh, rebar. These are actually pretty easy to key in. They're pretty big and they fit pretty well. So these are some of the better rebarbs that I've had to, that I had to deal with before. Assembly on this piece was pretty easy. Hulk is uh, obviously one massive body. The only thing that doesn't come attached is his portrait. Uh, the way he goes on to this big base is this humongous key right here. And he doesn't sit flush back there to give you the illusion that he's jumping. It was a bit of a challenge to get that key in there because this is a tight fit. And the base is lighter than I anticipated it to be. Uh, but once I got over that, he sits nice and flush. No issues at all with the balance. The, way, the weight really is behind him. So he's leaning back. Most of the weight's going to be here. And then the base is long. So this helps to counterbalance the weight back there. So it's actually very, very stable. Uh, let me get back to the review. So again, more of that rubble and some of that rebar. You know, the paint job is really nice. I do agree a little bit with Jim that the base is kind of on the smooth side, but it really doesn't look bad at all, especially in person. It's got a decent footprint. It's about 18 inches deep, but, uh, you know, it's not overly big. It's not really wide, maybe 14 inches wide, but it does the job. Again, nice textures, nice paint work good rust effects, and just nice overall rubble. You see some of the rubble spilled over and little pebbles here and there. But in my opinion, it looks good. Now moving on to the big guy himself. A lot of great detail went into his feet. You see the nails, they're discolored, 
and they're not symmetric, right? Some of them are a little longer than others, but really good work. You can see even the pores on the skin, a lot of great vein work. You see the tendons throughout. The green really pops. It looks really good. No complaints about the paint on this at all. And then the back, right, under the feet, dirty and grimy like they would be. Some of that vein, the calf muscles. The paint's nicely shaded too. They did not overdo it. It looks very realistic. Again, more of the back of the feet. Looks really good. And nice separation between all of the fingers and toes. Look at the back of the feet. Some of the wrinkles, very nice. Again, look at the vein work, the muscles, the tendons, all the striations. A lot of good work. Again, look at the porous skin. Great work by Sideshow's team. Amazing sculpt and paint on this. Now his uh, pants, they're ripped and they're nicely textured and layered. So they look like they're there, not simply painted on. So I love how they did that. You can see all the nice texturing on there. All the imperfections and the rips and all the stitching along the seams looks really good. They look worn, tattered. Really, really good. All the folds right here, the different uh, shading to create that worn effect. Amazing work on this. And then you have his upper torso. Even details on the belly button are absolutely amazing. Again, nice textures. Look at the rib cage, the six pack. This guy is huge. Again, the veins are popping, the muscles are everywhere, that beautiful paint and shading. Even his nipples they got, and they look good. They look like nipples. Again, look at the lats, they're enormous. Same thing over and over, veins, muscles, great paint. Shading in the back, all the muscle striations over here. Look at the back, it's bulging muscular body. It looks really good. By the spine, again, you see where his skin is basically just reacting to his pose. It's pinching in the bottom. Very nicely done by Daniel Bell. And then look at these humongous arms and biceps. This guy's got biceps on top of biceps. The veins on the forearms. Again, what I was saying earlier, that great separation on the fingers. So an amazing sculpt. Really good paint work. You can't say enough about the quality of the paint job on this. And look at the fingers, all the wrinkles, looks great. Again, the same pores all over the skin. And for his portrait, this was also a standout for me. Love the portrait, the teeth are really good. They're, you can see that glossy enamel, but they're dirty. So it looks realistic for what a Hulk you think would be. He's kind of a savage. Big eyebrows. My one nitpick is the eyes are done really well, but they're kind of on the small side. I wish they were a little bit bigger. The hair, some of the best I've seen on the Hulk statue. Great separation. You can see some of that green on top of it, right, for that effect. But overall, I think they did a really, really good job. So some of the concerns were, is this thing going to lean over time? Is it stable? It's extremely stable. I doubt this is going to lean. In fact, it's very easy to move around. So I've had no issue with him uh, displaying him. It won't be too difficult because he's kind of on the narrow side, even though he's long. So for me, this was really all positives. I don't have too much negative to say, other than maybe the portrait could have been, not necessarily the portrait, but the eyes could have been a little bit bigger. Teeth are done well. Uh, there is a seam that you can see in the back of the head that's basically under it, so you're never really gonna see it. So it's mostly seamless. I think it's great. I'm happy with it. I, I think that uh, if you get it, if you're able to get it, you'll be happy with it as well. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Chris, for inviting me. Uh, if you're not a member of his channel yet, Batman Statue Collector, do so. He's got a lot of great content, almost on a daily basis. And he's sort of uh, the voice of reason in the community. Uh, again, thank you for watching and take care. 
Hey guys, thank you so very much for watching today. And if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button right here on the screen and check out these two awesome videos. I think you're going to love them. And also please join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I would love to have you join in all the fun. Thank you guys so very much for watching. See you in the Batcave.